Good evening, golf friends. Happy British Open Week, or the Open, or whatever we're supposed to call it. It's an international week as we watch the pros out in Kent, England, and our host is Irish, but teaching in Canada, and I'm from South Carolina, so we're covering all bases tonight. A few weeks ago, we attended a strategy meeting and mentioned some exciting things for the rest of the year. Um, I'm super excited to share one of those. I will be hosting a V1 Sports Summer Summit at the Butch Harmon Academy at the Floridian on August 16th and 17th. Uh, it, we will offer V1 master certifications, PGA and LPGA credits. Uh, my teammate and partner in crime, who is awesome at planning these things, Kelly, will post the Evite invitation in our chat window. Um, thank you, Kelly. And please feel free to email me if you have any questions. Um, Kelly will put my email address over there as well. Super excited to host this. It's going to be a spectacular event. All right. As for tonight, welcome to all the folks that have registered and have joined us via the Zoom webinar link. And welcome to all of my friends tuning in um, from the V1 Sports Facebook Live channel. Don't hesitate to ask questions throughout the night. We will do our best to answer all of them. The recording of tonight's webinar will be available on our V1 Sports YouTube channel, and you will automatically get a copy of that recording if you are registered on the Zoom. It takes Anna a few days to edit it. As soon as she edits it and posts it, we send a link out uh, or an email out with that link, and you can rewatch it or share it with your friends. Okay, a little bit about my awesome company that I work for. V1 Sports is a 26-year-old company, and we are the leader in delivering video analysis, instruction solutions, and ground force technologies to athletes and coaches around the world. In those 26 years, we have supported over 4 million lessons and 10,000 V1 affiliated golf coaches. We are passionate about supporting your golf, biz, golf and baseball business. I'm Mandy Von C. I'm the Southeast Regional Sales Manager for, v, Manager for V1 Sports. I'm born, raised, and based in beautiful Charleston, South Carolina. Um, it's a super exciting time in our industry right now, and I could not be more excited and grateful to be doing what I'm doing with um, my team at V1 Sports. Okay, I love talking traces. I love hosting with these professionals, and um, I've been begging Steve Moore to join me for a while. I'm super, super, super excited to finally catch up with him. Steve, thank you so much for joining me tonight on Traces. Uh, no, uh, absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me on. So delighted to be here. All right, so a little bit about Steve. He is the head golf and instruction professional at Laura Bay Golf Club in Collingwood, Ontario. It's two and a half hours north of Toronto. I hope I said that right. Yeah. He teaches golfers using pressure at all levels of the game. Steve first took up the game of golf at the late age of 15. He immediately found a passion for the game and reduced his handicap from 28 to one in a span of three years. That's pretty spectacular. Steve then enrolled in the PGA training program and qualified four years later with a diploma in golf management. Steve has tons of certifications, including TPI and, of course, the V1 Sports Pressure Mat certification. If you haven't gotten it, Steve, I will send it to you right away. Um, okay, to get started, a few questions so we can get to know Steve. Steve, how did you get started teaching golf? Kind of what was your path quickly to get you here? Um, I think pretty similar to most teachers in the fact that when I first started playing and got serious, I thought I was going to be on tour. So that, that was pretty much the, the main aim. Um, I was, I was always into it though. I was very lucky when I, the day I joined my local golf club was the day we got our first head professional and um, who's Shane O'Grady, who actually works with uh, Leona McGuire, who's on um, the LPGA tour now. Mm -hmm. um, so I came friendly with him and, you know, he was very into the technique of the swing. So I kind of went down that path a little bit. Um, turned pro, tried to play mini tours, uh, challenge tour, Euro pro, didn't work out, um, and then kind of went back into the teaching side of things um, as a default, and just found that I was actually pretty good at, at chatting to people and communicating. Um, so I, I enjoyed that part of it. Um, so that was kind of like, okay, yeah, I'm pretty good at that. Everybody kind of like, you know, told me that I was pretty good at talking to people and, and you know, working, working through their issues. So that's kind of where I went, okay, well, I'll, I'll see how that goes. And then went over to Austria, worked there for a year, teaching full time, came back to Ireland and started teaching again and then gave it up for like, well, not gave it up. I was a manager of a facility for a couple of years and then uh, moved to Canada and started chasing it up again. So yeah. nice. Yeah. That's awesome. So you've been in a kind of a dip, lot of different aspects of the game. OK, so I'm really excited about this particular stats. I always talk about stats and stuff, but you purchased the mat for me in March. It was actually delivered. I checked the FedEx delivery this morning. It was delivered to you March 12th. That's this year. So you guys, Steve has had his pressure mat for literally four months and one day, okay? 
And so I'm really excited about that because I know that the, the information you're going to present tonight is going to be really powerful. But what was your first impression of the V1 pressure mat a few short months ago when you got it in your hands? Um, I was like, oh, this is really cool. Um, because you kind, of, you kind of get those things. And as I said to you, like I'd act, asked them, um, I'd messaged Jake Thurm, um, who I know like is one of the best guys on it. And a couple of friends, Robbie Fails, who, who uses it also. Um, I got their opinion. Um, and then, yeah, it was, it was something I hadn't looked into. So I was just excited to again, deep dive on something that I hadn't really encountered before with ground pressure and, and ground forces. And, and, you know, just start discovering and start like helping students a little bit better. So like, yeah, just jumping on it and moving around and dancing around the first day and just seeing you know, all the traces jump and stuff. And I'm like, oh yeah, this is, this is the business. So yeah, I love it. so, yeah, we talked about that and I've connected a lot of pressure people with people that have questions about pressure. And mm -hmm. I, I like to brag because, you know, this platform here, we've, we've been able to put you guys, you and Jake yeah. and Robbie and all these people on this platform for up folks to ask questions too. So guys sure. ask questions. You know, Steve had questions. He just called Jake Thurm and they talked about it. And then he bought a mat. Now Steve's here using the mat, making better golfers. Um, Steve also mentioned to me before we even started tonight that if any of you have questions after, send them to Steve. We love sharing the knowledge. So um, thank you, Steve. Now, I always tell my golf professionals when they are buying this mat or looking at the technology, how, they, they ask me, they say, how do I figure it out? What, how do I, how, what's the training? And the very first thing I say is get on the mat. Get yeah. on it. You know your swing, right? Just when you get in your hands, get on it and check it out and think about what you think your pressure is. Did you guys do any of that when you got it? Yeah, I, I, I think it's kind of like a kind of default mechanism. You think when you get something like that, somebody's going to show you on some paper, or some website, right? This is exactly what everybody should look like. So this is what everybody should look like. So put everybody on and then match them up to that. And that's just, it just doesn't work like that. And you got to, as many great videos as there are and certifications, you know, you just go in this loop where you're gathering a little bit of information all the time. You got to jump on it yourself. You got to start hitting shots, match that up with the information you see, start connecting it and, and understanding it because, you know, to, as teachers or coaches, whoever's watching this or players, you know, if we're just regurgitating somebody else's information, you're not understanding it. You need to understand it because you need to be able to respond if, if your pupil asks you, okay, but, but why do I do that? You know, why right. do I move that way? Or why, should, why are you telling me to do this? And if you don't have those answers, like it's, you know, it's very difficult for them to buy into what you're, what you're selling, so to speak. So yeah, I think it was just first, yeah, just get on it, get on it, learn it. Play with know, it, right? Learn, learn your own language. Cause everybody, we all, we all have different eyesight, mind sight. So learn it yourself. If you can verbalize it to the, to your customer, it's going to be cool. You'll, you'll be fine. I love that. Learn your own language. So we're going to give you a piece of tool that, that gives you the data, right? Yeah. Then you take the data and do with it what you want as far as mm. your teaching, you know, style. Okay. Yeah. So how did the pressure mat change how you talk? When you got it, what, what, it, what changed with your lessons? Uh, I went a lot of pre-swing stuff. Um, so, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. but when I look back, like last year, a lot of when I started like, you know, progressing more in teaching, getting better players, I, I would look more more for the romantic kind of the sexy stuff like the movements and all that but when I started actually getting the pressure man I started noticing that a lot of players that I asked to do certain moves couldn't actually do it because of the way they were preset or pre-swing so I was actually asking guys our ladies our pupils to do stuff that now I knew they couldn't do because of the way they were setting up so that that changed a lot of the way I viewed okay well pre-swing stuff get them right get the pressure right depending on what you want to do in their swing um and then just the movements, not so much the positional, which we'll talk about, but it was more the sequence of everything. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll talk about other things, but like learning that, you know, it all flows. I think we'll, we'll get deeper into it, but yeah, it, it was really making sure, okay, we're well, looking at the positions that people set up in. So, you know, that they're not off to a bad start straight away, that they're giving themselves such a neutral positioning that they can move or give themselves the opportunity to move like they would like to. Um, and then, yeah, just looking at it as a whole concept that it's always moving. There should always be something going. Um, right. The golf swing is one fluid movement, right? Yeah. But I, I'm, I, yeah, I'm like literally just peeling like one layer of the orange. Like I'm not even, yeah, there's still a long way to go for me too. So don't worry, everybody. There's plenty of time. Yeah. yeah. Right. So I ask, I always ask if you use it with beginners, intermediates, and advanced. And then I ask about chipping, putting, mm -hmm. and club fitting. Now you have not had your mat long enough to really get into chipping and putting, I don't think. Is that correct? Yeah. 
Yeah, and because we were still locked down, so we were like March, April for me, I wasn't using it at all. Um, first week of March indoors, um, so it was just a long game. Uh, put everybody on it. Um, we'll see as I go through my stats that I've collected. I have about 30 people on it right now um, for full swing. Um, started a few putts last week, which was kind of cool to put them on the putting, which was fun. Mm -hmm. We actually saw a bit of movement there. Um, yeah, and I, and I think the chipping is something I haven't done as yet, but I think that could be just with defaults that I see in terms of, of pivots and tilts, I think it could be really cool on the chipping too. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so one more really fun question and then we're gonna dive into your data mm -hmm. and I wanna see some traces and stuff. But sure. I always like to sort of dig into who you are and something that people might not know about you that might have gotten you to where you're at. And I do mm -hmm. find that you have very much, you're into continued education and you're really yeah. interesting. So you have some odd, other sports, not odd sports, but odd sports for a golf pro. What mm -hmm. are those? I know you're really good at- uh, I, 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 Yeah, badminton. I was, I was good at badminton when I was younger. So um, bad, that's badminton for those of us in the South that don't understand yeah. how Steve pronounced that. <laughs> yeah, sorry, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, like, again, uh, my, my parents were very good. They encouraged me to play a lot of different sports. So I played badminton, um, a couple of Irish sports that grown up like Gaelic football, um, played soccer, football. Nice. Um, nice. So yeah, I played all of those things really growing up. Um, and then the badminton kind of came to a head as soon as I kind of really started um improving at the golf let's say yeah fell in love with golf so that, that was the uh, that was the end of the balance and nice still though athletic and and you know aware of your body and and golf must have come easy after being so good at a cool sport like badminton you also play the guitar right yeah yeah um i haven't played in two years but yeah no i do play um self-taught i don't know whether that's a good or a bad thing and uh, normally nice. when someone says that to me on the driving range i'm like oh god it's not good so um yeah probably not a great thing but yeah no i, I like um i love music um absolutely adore music so it's uh it's one of my passions so it's that's my kind of chill down at, at the end of the day is just sit in the car listening to some some tunes so yeah. i love it me too mm -hmm. we'll go see some shows together when everything there you go yeah. all right Never so you've got quite a quite a list of things to go through and I want to dive into those mm -hmm. so do you want to start screen sharing you know I was going to ask you about drills but I don't want to go there until you're ready yeah um let me just see here you guys Steve's going to do some screen shares and he's got some videos prepared with all sorts of cool things so we're gonna um I'm gonna let him go just go for it and if you have questions please put them in the chat window and you're doing great with our right. yeah looks great so this was one of my first lessons learned okay not just pupil wise but actually what i learned um so i'm gonna do is just i'm gonna actually just tie this a little bit up in the screen up here so nobody can see it and i'm just gonna play this video through um this guy's a really good player plays off about two handicap um came to me put him on the mat um because i saw him on the mat before um, I saw him swing, sorry, before we put him on the mat and I just got the mat and I was all excited to have it outdoors. And I was like, bingo, this guy go, moves and has weight or pressure, sorry, on his toes before he even swings. And I said, I'm going to get him and I'm going to put him on the mat and I'm going to show him his pressures all on his toes before he's even swung. And that's why he can't turn and that's why he can't rotate. So that was all good. I thought I was really, really smart. And this is the last <laughs> one. Um, <laughs> Always <laughs> never tell the person before you look at the trace. This is the lesson number one. Okay. <laughs> look at it and then start talking. So I okay, so we've proven here that you do not know what is going on with the ground until you have a pressure mat. 100%. Even if you're a great golf coach and you think you know what's going on, you have I, to have a pressure trace. Yeah, right? I was I was convinced this guy was like in his toes from the very start. Now he does get there. So if we're watching the trace, I'm just going to wind this back slowly. But you can see in his trail. Uh, in his heel at 62 you know he's getting back there into his trail and as he gets to the top he's 81 in that trail heel so he really has i thought he was like pushing on his toes but it's actually in transition where it starts coming down mm -hmm. so he, he starts getting there in transition but it's a little bit later than i thought it was it gets down on the trail a lot on the front on uh, the lead foot that we saw um but yeah so this guy right um for all those guys that are using it for the first time don't bring the person around <laughs> and show them um, and tell them before you show them or before you look at it. So just have a look at the trace. Again, this is a perfect explanation, as you said, Mandy, of what we see, you know, 
don't guess, measure it. We have the opportunity. Um, so with this guy, I was kind of right, but again, not not particularly right in the fact that it wasn't really starting on, on setup. It was more as he progressed and then in this transition, that's where it was happening. Um, it was probably my eyes got a little bit detracted um, by his head movement or a little bit of forward bend in, into the mm -hmm. backswing. But again, uh, point being, just be really, really careful in what you're going to say to someone before you have a look at that trace. Um, so that was that guy. Um, so okay, so that's what do you see, right? Mm -hmm. Pardon me. Your notes say was that the first video? That's what do you see? That, yeah, yeah. So yeah, what you see, right? What Perfect. you see is always not not what's happening. Trust me. Okay, but that's mm -hmm. that's the great thing about this, and and I think you know as coaches again, if there's a lot of coaches watching um we're teachers also now if you're going to be a teacher i think it's like a four-year degree to be a kindergarten teacher right that's the base level of being a teacher and you learn how to teach we don't learn how to teach right for a certain extent so we're coaches without learning how to teach so the more information we can have that's more simplistic to show our pupils the better right so you know if you can show a person like this guy here where i'm bringing them back and just going okay well see watch the silver bars so don't even get into the numbers, just watch where the silver bars are going. Up, back, and then forward. It makes my job of communicating an awful lot easier because the actual, the actual method, okay, or the, the, what I'm using to show him is an awful lot simpler. Um, but yeah, no, so just what you see, just be careful of it. Um, so I started learning all these lessons as I started teaching. You know, okay, well, what's the best way to use it? And, you know, put them on, have a look, and then just be sure what you see is, is actually what's happening. Um, as I started using it a little bit more, again, what we talked about, I, I really got into, okay, well, where should everybody be, right? Where should, where, how much pressure should a, a golfer have in his trail or her trail? Uh, when should it move? Because I thought there was this one way and, and there really isn't. So um, the next thing we're going to talk about is just maintaining fluidity in, in the actual motion itself. So this is my search with a player. Um, if we go up top of backswing first, right? Aesthetically, on the right, it looks nicer. Yeah, looks better. So if I'm gonna put that up on Instagram and go, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it looks nicer, <laughs> right? Because the, the shaft's more down, down the line, everything's cool. The problem is, right? Swing on the left is the before and the swing on the right is the after. And what we were searching for, if you look at the swing on the left-hand side, okay, you're gonna see on that trail foot, a lot of pressure in the toe. So we were trying to get him to move that pressure more into his trail heel so he could rotate more and get the hands a little bit deeper, right? Hey, you guys, Steve, I'm gonna interrupt you real quick. Yep. You guys, Steve has drawn a red circle around the um, gray bar on the right. That's telling us that he that number is really small to see. So I just wanna point out it's 63% okay. weight in the toes and there's 37, thank you. I just, sometimes it's hard for people and they don't understand, they've never maybe seen that graph. So I just wanna okay, make sure- sorry. We're yeah. We're My showing problem. that we are seeing 63 in the toe. Thank you for zooming in. I love it. Of course. <laughs> love it when you're driving the software so beautifully. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, so again, this is early on in, in, in my kind of uh, use of the mat. And so I'm like, okay, dude, like this is what we got to get. And so we're like, okay, push into your trail heel, move your pressure into your trail heel, pretend you're like, you know, squeezing something and, and we'll get what we want. Okay. So the swing on the right is, is us getting what we want in terms of that internal internal feel. Okay, so as he gets up to the top of the backswing, he's getting more pressure onto his trail heel. Um, so in essence, we've got what we really want. So we should be celebrating. But if you have a look, right, and I'm going to go back to the one on the left hand side. And what I want you guys to look at is the COP dot, which is the little white dot there. So you can see that's moved quite a bit to the right of center, which means the center of pressure has actually shifted to his trail side, which is what we would like to see happen. Now, if I'm gonna go over to the right-hand side, which we said was better, okay. See the way that's barely shifted? Mm -hmm. So me telling him not to, or to maintain to that trail heel, to really get into that trail heel, means that he's actually stalled. He's not moving. So he's not shifting, he's not doing anything. He's just planting because that's what we told. That's our cue, that's our verbiage. And in my mind, from what I've seen so far from, from movement, that's not the best place to be in, especially for this player because he likes to move to generate force. So we had that kind of trace on the left-hand side where we had what I call it kind of like a safety pin where it kind of goes straight back on a line and then starts to actually loop out like this on the way down. 
Mm -hmm. um, and we had the center pressure, that little white dot moving back. So that's not a bad trace in itself, that one you're looking at, okay? But I went after the trail because I was like, no, I'm going to get his pressure into his trail heel. Yeah. And we did all that. And I'm like celebrating going, yep, yeah, well done, man. Um, and then we look at the trace and center pressure. And that again, that little white dot didn't really move. So we didn't get a lot of pressure into the trail side, didn't really load it. And because we didn't load it, the next move for him was to just push everything out this way. Mm -hmm. um, so it didn't benefit us in any way, shape or form. Uh, yet I'd gotten what I believed to be to be correct. Um, well, you got what you believed to be correct at one point in the swing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Which... And you, yeah. And you could build on that. Um, you know, and it, like hands up, like, listen, I, I'm by no means the greatest teacher in the world or in the area. Um, <laughs> And I only noticed this when I came home and I'm looking at it because I go through all my lessons at night, like, like a lot of us do. And, you know, you're, you're, you're critical of yourself in terms of what you could have done better. And he didn't hit it better. And I wanted to know why. And I looked at that and I found, I was like, oh yeah, you know, it was better trace wise or better, sorry, pressure wise, but the trace didn't benefit from it. So mm -hmm. again, it's an individual thing. You got to look at these players as all individuals and everybody's different in how they move and how they trace. And, and that's really, really important. And how he interpreted what you were trying to do with the data, what the data you gave him and how he interpreted yeah. it was not necessarily where we wanted him to end up. It's fascinating. I love yeah. the fluidity, not positions. We have talked about a hundred times at impact. Yeah. This is where we want, but yeah. that's great if it doesn't, unless, you know, you got to be there. It's a fluid movement. Great. 100%. Fascinating. Yeah, there, so there's a really there's a really great guy called Mark Grace down in Memphis that does a lot of uh, body track stuff too, and he's um, does a lot of work with Dr. Kwan, and that's very much what what they do, um, fluidity but with pressure with the correct pressure segmentation. So um, if you can get the positioning like with this guy, if I noticed that in, in the actual session, I might have then added on the fact, okay, yeah, but we still need to move from there. Um, so you could have discussed it a little bit further if if I if I'd seen it. Um, but again, it's just making notes that, yeah, achieve the positions, but achieve them in the sequence of a whole mm -hmm. motion. Um, and that's what you what you know, you, you really start to notice is that, especially when that COP um, starts moving forward, you know, it's always constantly moving. So if it's constantly moving, then the player is constantly moving. So it's, there's no backswing and downswing. So it's all one. Right. Yep. You can break it down. You can break it down as much as you like, but it's all one movement. So something has to be always pushing because force, obviously, you know, yep. there's intention and then there's force and movement. So, OK. All right. Yeah. I've got a question um, while you pull up your next video from yep. Roy. This is a great question about pressure in the right heel. Mm -hmm. He was told you would actually feel your right hip joint move towards the front foot and yet keeping weight buried into the right heel. Is this correct? I have to do that. Where? So I was told you would actually feel your right hip joint move towards the front foot and yet keeping weight buried into the right heel. In the Is back. Correct? Oh, uh, he doesn't say. Yeah. Um, I'll ask Sam, see, like Sam Sneed says. Uh, not something that I would look into, but yeah, if it works, okay. you know, you, you can have verbiage and cues that provide different movements and patterns. So what I say to, if I have five people standing in a room in front of me and I ask them all to jump as high as they can, they're all going to jump in different manners and different heights. Yeah. So you, you could just get the person that jumps the way you want them to jump. Um, right. but yeah, not some, it's, it's a really good question. Um, and I don't know the answer to it and I'm not one of those people that starts BSing when I don't know the answer to something. So I'm not sure. Is the honest answer so i'd have i'd have to know i think he's talking about downswing um he's talking about the hip pivot yeah um again like anytime you're talking about restricting that trail hip bone i'm not i'm not in love with that um i think you have to have a little bit of rotation and a little bit of extension in the backswing to allow some some of the pelvis to actually move out of the way um and then in the downswing you're, you're really pushing it forward but again it's 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 what works for him cool all right, the third video. Answer, answer. Answer. If he wants more info, he can email me or DM me on Instagram. We can chat. Yeah, that. absolutely. We'll put that in a couple. Um, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll save that one. Order of occurrence and its importance was your next. Yeah. All right. Hmm. So now, here we go here. 
So I unfortunately lost the trace from before. Okay, so we're, you're gonna have to bear with me on this one. That's okay. Okay, um, good player. Um, on the left is the before. Okay, so I've thrown a few kind of circles in there. Can you see that? Yep, we can. Okay, um, so what we had was this player, um, a lot of pressure on the lead side, on his left side, and um, pre-swing. So his kind of first move was to push that pressure laterally away from target. Now, that's not a bad thing in itself, but what that delays is the actual pivot or rotation. So by the time he actually starts to start rotating that backswing, he's actually shifted off and he's got a little bit too much forward bend or flexion from the top half. And so the pivot starts taking him further away or off center off the golf ball um, mm -hmm. into that position. So as he starts back down again, you're gonna see this head actually start dropping in behind. Okay, his chin is really getting to his chest and he's stuck behind the golf ball there in terms of his pivots. A lot of side bend, huge amount of side bend, not a lot of rotation. Um, so not a very efficient position to be in as, as we look at that. Um, this is us with him on the pressure mat on the right hand side. Um, I'm gonna blow that up. So you still see, we're still a little bit on lead side. So if you guys are looking at that bottom number to 55, 45, um, 55 is pressure on his lead side, 45 is the pressure on trail. Um, but if we do the same thing, okay, let me just move stuff around here for you. And we still have that line. As we start back, just because we changed the pressure in the setup, okay, so he was 65 in the lead on the left hand side, and we moved that back to 50, 55, much lighter feeling, much more balanced feeling. You can see we actually moved, if I go back to start, um, we actually straightened the right knee a little bit too. So now as he starts in back, battle uh, shift, pretty much gone. Yep. He's pivoting wow. around and the pivot gets over. Now, this is the big difference. So this is where you want to get him over the golf ball. So as he what? gets down to impact, and now I'm going to bring up impact beforehand. Can you see the difference in the head position? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So did you show him this? How, how did you yeah. get here with him? Yeah, yeah. I know I showed him. Um, he, he's not mad into technical stuff. So you got to be, um, I remember I got like some like 3D mapping thing I got. It was, it was awful. I was terrible with it. Um, but I put like all the, all the little gadgets on him and he was just like not happy. So, um, <laughs> so I always, this, this dude is like, he, he's an airline pilot. So he's like smart as, as hell, but he just doesn't like this stuff. So we're very simple with it, but we, this is the way I look at people, right? We, we all have this pre-programmed DNA to swing a certain way. And you, you'll see that no more than in Canada because somebody will stop playing in September, won't swing a golf club till April and the swing is the exact same. So we all have this pre-programmed DNA. We're lazy as individuals because we don't like change. So anytime we try to change anything or create different patterns or movements, our brain is gonna reject them as quickly as possible. So the more we can talk about it, show it, illustrate it, back it up, all we're doing is kind of reinforcing that this is the right thing to do because what happens to most people is their brain's like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Hit a bad shot. Brain goes, told you this didn't work. We were much happier when we weren't thinking about something and we could still hit that crap shot. So mm -hmm. your brain's going to go, all right, let's do that then. So the more we show people, you know, and create markers of, of actual benefit, you know, like, so we showed them this, they hit a good golf ball and then they make this connection. Okay? And I think it creates a marker in the brain, in my own opinion, right? Amateur, I'm not a psychologist. Um, it creates this marker where they go, okay, yeah, that's good. It produces an endorphin. Um, so showing him this and limiting how much technology we put behind it is really, really important for him. So he loves the visual. Um, throw the markers down and like, dude, yeah, this is so much better. You can see it. Um, so he loved it once he saw it. And he wasn't too keen jumping on the mat, but when it, at first, but once we put him on there and he actually saw what it can do, he was, yeah, he was happy as, as Larry. So yeah, no. It, yeah, it, we love that. And there's yeah. no, there's just so everyone knows you don't have to put anything on. You literally just stand on it. There's yes. no, there's no attachments. No. There's not even a cable. It just, it's just like a doormat. You stand on it. It's a real fancy doormat. <laughs> but yeah, he, he, he definitely would have been one of the ones where I'd asked him to do something similar where we've been working on um, rotating the pelvis through impact a little bit more. Um, obviously keeping in mind his age and his mobility. Um, but I wanted him to rotate that pelvis a little bit more. Um, but I don't think he could get it because that first movement in back was, was so laterally. Um, and the pivot would happen so late and take him off center that the first move has to be lead side back lateral and then pivot back underneath it. So he's created too much side bend and you can't have that rotation then working together. So um, doing this, uh, it's really simple for him. 
because he just does the como tap drill. So you yeah. start with the feet tapping and just work them out so you're balanced, um, like duck. Um, and that's all he thinks about. And he knows it's set. So preset, again, what we talked about earlier on, preset him up. The preset takes care of the technical stuff. You don't have to talk to him about the technical jargon if you do not want to. So yeah, this this was this was a good guy. Um, and I was glad to to help him out. So that was cool. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. How many so, times has he rewatched that video? I bet hundred um, times. A lot. Yeah. He gives me <laughs> I, I I I like you know I like talk to my students. I think one of the uh, the things that we need to kind of work on a little bit is is the deficit in time between a, between your lessons. So you have say two weeks or whatever it is and then that player plays three rounds of golf and has three practice sessions that's 15 hours and you're only getting one out of that 15 um so you either make it count or you make sure that you talk to them three days later a week later 14 days make sure it's going well because then you'll just have to repair the stuff when they come back and they're going to regress they always regress um (laughs) yeah so um this is just a kind of a cool one to, to look at um it was a kind of a a funky one I, I hope he's not watching this but really it's good called player. flying against the rules so yeah i well, love this, it this guy could hit it right so he when he hit it he connected real well this is down in cope town and um, i teach uh, down there and um, for scott cokes um so the cool thing about this one is the cop trace all right so i'm gonna blow this up um and what you're gonna see is as he goes back very very little okay so it's it's really not moving at all okay so wow. he, even with the pressure, very, very little back. And what's going to get fun is at the end, it goes to kind of like P3 to P4, it shifts back to his trail foot. So it gets back there. So you're thinking, all right, that's okay. Like it's a little bit delayed in getting there, but you know, you know as, as long as you get there, it's like waiting for an airplane. As long as you get there, that's the main thing. But <laughs> as he starts down, it stops. So it literally does not move till impact. How does he do that? I don't know. <laughs> this is... Seriously. So I was fortunate enough to spend some time with George Gankus in LA when I started like trying to improve and stuff like that. And one of the things George told me before I left was he goes, find out why all swings work. So if every, anybody wanted to know one of the top five things for using this mat is you want to trace like this. You want to trace that you look at and you go, how the hell does that work? <laughs> <laughs> and then go find out what, how it works and go hit balls doing it. You know, go hit balls and replicate this trace and see what you have to do, what muscles you have to recruit, what wrist angles you have to recruit to make this happen. And then you'll understand this guy's swing. And then the next day you'll go back. And this was last week, so I haven't seen him again yet. But the next day we'll go back and I'll have a lot more information because I'll have the feels of what he feels um, right. versus my mind sight or eyesight. Um, but yeah, that, I just thought that was a really, really cool trace to show because it, it, I hadn't seen it. And again, very, very late, pulls this one a little bit. His alignment was skewed off to, uh, off to target right at the start and he pull over it. So this was us with him squared up. So that's why you see the ball starting a little bit left. He was in progression of change. Um, but yeah, no, this was just a really, really cool trace. So, so who, tell, tell me about that guy. He looks super athletic. He looks yeah. like a, I mean, what, what does he do? Is he a football player? Um, no, no, he's um he's in marketing, so he doesn't actually do like you know really something about it. But like, yeah, he's well built. <laughs> um, he's like he's getting like chirp. I don't know. Do you do you guys use the phrase chirping over in the states? We no. don't use it in Ireland, but like it's teasing, whatever it is, or taking the no. piss. We say in Ireland. So no. all his mates would take the piss out of him for not hitting it straight. Um, so that's why he came down, and we just worked on a few things. And uh, if I showed you the face on, you'd see like a very very strongly grip. And the forearm really, really rotated. So he'd spin and roll um, as he worked back. So it, again, it, it matches up for him. He would aim 25 yards right, match up, pull down across, rotate club face, and it would work. But again, it's not consistent. So so did you go try to figure that out? Did you kind of try to recreate that? Yeah, I tried to recreate it. Um, we kind of did the, the lead wrist <clears throat> in what it did um, really, really... I think that's where it came from, that it wouldn't allow the pelvis to move. So the lead wrist kind of rolls up and out. Okay, we've got it a little bit better here, but it's still going to go a little bit late. Um, so then the forearm is rolling too. Um, so that's why the pelvis didn't really engage. So we, we get that club a little bit more in front of his hands or in front of his pelvis at this position here and rotate the pelvis a little bit more. That should set him up. Um, but again, you don't know. This is the thing. And when you look in, you can't really see it in there, but if you look at his lead wrist where the club handle is actually positioned, it's in, it's in that depth area. 
don't. So enjoy. that goes back to your setup. Yeah. Yeah. Again, always so many things, you know what I mean? Like, don't, yeah. Don't overlook that stuff. Like it's cause this is the thing, right. And when I started teaching and like, like us all, we all have envisions of, of being on tour and teaching tour players. But I imagine, okay, from the mini tour players that I work with, it's, it's very simple things, really simple. So if you were a PGA Tour coach on the, P, on the PGA Tour and you were able to tell each player one little thing or one word and you would improve them, you would be the most successful coach out there. So it doesn't need to, you need to understand. So you need to be a good librarian in terms of knowing what all the books have, but it's the delivery, it has to be simplistic. So with this guy, it's, it's very simple stuff. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. don't, don't know the stuff, but you don't have to complicate it for players. I think it's just my opinion. Sorry. No, I would say that too. I'm a beginner golfer, as you guys have heard me say before. And I like yeah. getting the simple information. That's why when I'm taking, looking at my pressure, I like the weather map graph. graph. Mm. That's, uh, that's what I understand. That was, that's yeah. what makes sense to me. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. What's next? All right. Um, Older versus newer. So I have to add in the er is just in case either either dies these guys um, complain. So two really really good players, <laughs> really really good players. The guy on the left is um, a member at my club. Um, he's won the club championship, the Gross championship. He competes down in uh, Florida, I think it is. Has won championship What's his down name? there. Uh, Rob Myhill. Okay. Um, so really really good player. Um, just naturally just has this innate ability to move the golf ball. Um, so, uh, the guy on the right is David Cerselli, who's a local kind of, um, elite player. He'd be a scratch golfer too. Um, and what you notice is before we even go, I'll, I'll zoom these up, um, a little bit for you. Cause look at the traces. So when I started and first got this mat and somebody showed me those traces and just blanked out the players, I would have presumed that's a bad trace because of the way it goes. Cause it goes out in a way. So mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, well, COP is going out COP club handle has to follow cop from what i vaguely know so that means it's a bad trace i'm like yeah but both these guys shoot level power under power both strike it really really good um so as you work through these traces a little bit of lead early cop goes back as we get back to the top of the backswing um you can see really, really good trail pressure um 80 percent in the trail side um in here Oh, I don't have this one recorded. So um, 77 there um, and then good in the trail heel too. So a lot of really, really good things. And COP pops out a little bit, but handle club delivery, really, really good. Yeah, it looks amazing. Yeah, so it's solid. So he, he really, really uses his hand and he knows how to work and he's got really, really good trail arm movement. He delivers the club really, really well. Um, and then uh, David on the right hand side again, similar thing. Little thing you're going to notice from both of these guys, where the, where the COP goes before they swing, a little bit towards target side. So you're going to see it shift. That little white dot's going to shift towards their lead heel in both players before they go. Um, but again, David, up to the top of the back swing, a little bit of pressure on the toes in the trail. Um, but we're kind of working with him a little bit on that and what his trail hip bone actually does in, in the back swing. Um, it gets a little bit extended in transition and blocks them off a little bit. But again, COP going out, which again, I thought was wrong. But again, guy who hits it an absolute ton and is a really good player. So that's just showing you, okay, well, you know, don't just work off the trace. The trace is good. It's information and that's fantastic. You know, but even look at it and go, okay, well, if you have your player out there and he's hitting it perfect and you have it on flight scope track, line, whatever you have, and you have those numbers and the numbers are really good, save that trace because that's the way they best move in my Yeah. Opinion. Just so that's a good thing. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's a, it's a, information is key, no matter whether it be good, bad or indifferent in terms of ref, uh, how it reflects onto the player, or the movement information is, is the, the most important thing. So it might be more the player's normal versus the average of exactly. what we say the trace should look like. 100%. And we'll have a look later on when we flip onto um, the spreadsheet where I have all the data that I've saved. There's very few similarities in it. And there's a lot of different players there, trust me, and a lot of different data. And there's because I save it because I want to prove myself right or wrong. I want to, if it ends up where me, I do all this for a year and I get like 500 
uh, the players on that and I look at it and can't find any like similarities, that's, an, that's a question answered because then I go, okay, well, there is no similarity. So now I have to treat everybody as an individual. That's fine. Mm-hmm. Once, once, it, once it's resolved in my head, I'm good to go. But if I have that question and I don't have the answer, that, that frustrates me a little bit. Is that right? Continued education. I love it. You're going to yeah. keep figuring it out. So good. We're so glad to have you. All right. All right. You have intention effect. Yeah. What is this? Okay. So here we go. This is me. Please don't slide my swing off too much. This is you? This is me. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I'm, All still, right. carrying, I'm still carrying a little Christmas weight right about now. So. <laughs> Okay. It's so, July, Steve. I know. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's a, no, that's December. It's just really sunny at Toronto in December. Um, <laughs> all right. So let's roll it up to the top of the <laughs> Okay. And we're, we're going to go on aesthetics here. And okay. I know we can't open this up to people, but if people were to look at those two aesthetics and go, okay, well, which one is a draw swing and which one is a fade swing? It would be pretty difficult to point out something between where the club is. You can say, okay, the one on the left, the club's a little bit more across the line, but other than that, not a whole bunch. But if you actually look at the traces, okay, and you watch where the COP goes on the left trace. So where I've crudely drawn a D in there, that's the draw swing. And my writing, my writing is as bad on an iPad as it is in real in real life. So we go, we're going to roll back to the start of the D one. So I just want you to watch the actual the COP. Okay, so that's again the white dot we're talking about. Is that large enough, Mandy? Yeah, looks okay. great. So this is me now. I am not changing anything, right? And this is this is the only time I'll do this because now I've seen the the actual traces. I can't do this again because my brain will already have an idea of where it should go and what I should do. So this is me doing it without looking at traces without doing anything. I just stood up and I went, okay, I want to hit a draw from the exact same posture, exact same baseline positioning. And on the right, I want to hit a fade. And the only thing I'm going to change is intention. So I'm not going to try and do anything really different with the club in, in my best interest, okay, in my best efforts. I love um, this. So when, when we went draw on the one on the left-hand side, what you're going to see is the COP moves an awful lot closer to a linear fashion. So it stays an awful lot closer to that line. As we get up to the top of the backswing, Okay, we're just gonna hold it up there. We're at the top of backswing there. You're gonna see 83% on my trail foot. So I've shifted back into my trail side pretty good. Um, I have a little pressure on my trail toe to 66 you're looking at there on the, mm-hmm. on the film on the left, but on the right-hand side of that. And then on the right-hand side, we're gonna go back to the start. Now, what I want you to do is watch the COP on the right-hand side as it starts back. So see the way it jumps out? Mm-hmm. So this is fade and tension. Okay, now I get up to the top. Okay, and you're going to see 80-20 on the toe. So you can even see the red, the actual color, right? And, and when we're talking yeah. about that, have a look at that a little bit more closely if you are a coach or instructor. It's not something that I look at enough, and I'm, I'm starting to try and correct myself, is the actual footprint outline and where, what the color is, um, just as an aside. But anyway, um, I digress. Um, so, Wait, so why do you say that? Say that again? Because I, I skip it, right? So previously I've skipped it. I'm not paying enough attention to the actual color code, right? To how red it gets or how shallow it is or how blue it is. And I okay. should be paying more attention to that. And we I did a trace this morning, which is pretty cool. Um, I know we're close on time, but we're going to talk about footwear. And you're going to see exactly what I talk about when I do that. Okay. It's, it's really, really awesome. Cool. And we, we have, player, yeah, you're good. You got another yeah, 15 minutes. Okay. So fade on the right, more pressure on my trail toe. COP, that white dot has moved more out towards that toe. Draw on the left, COP has moved more linear, straight back towards the center of my heel. Okay, so let's go draw, which is the screen on the left-hand side into downswing. You're gonna see very, very linear trace. That, that COP line is really, really just moving straight along the line, right to impact. And then it goes very far left in the little hook pattern as it should because my pelvis is rotating and the pressure is going left. If we look at the fade pattern on the right-hand side, as that COP starts to go back, it starts working inwards, then a little bit up, and then back down again and across the golf ball. So you'll have two different traces just from pure intention. So not to get too deep about it, okay? But if you have a player, and 
I don't know where this level is. That's the problem, right? I don't know where the DNA pro pre-programming is for a golfer. If I'm a golfer and I'm bad and I've played for 10 years, I don't know if I have this or not. If I'm a golfer and I'm good and I've played for a year, I don't know whether I have this or not. But if you are struggling with a player in terms of the way they're moving the pressure, don't be afraid to ask them to hit these shots and maintain a little bit of external focus. Because I can tell you, if you can move a player who was substantially out or in or whatever way you want to shift them, and all they have to do is think fade or think draw or think lower or think higher, they will love you because that's simple and they can go play with it. Um, I'm not saying it'll work. Um, I, I did it with a player a couple of nights ago and it was so like, it was nice because it's easy. Uh, every coach watching this has had lessons where they're like pulling their hair out at the end, not the student's fault, but they've tried everything. So we want to make it as simple as possible for both parties. So just have a go at this. You know what I mean? I think I listened to something this morning and it wasn't me. It was, uh, I forget, but somebody said Sean Foley and they quoted Sean Foley. And I think it was Jason actually. It was Jason said when Sean Foley came down to them and was out with Jason, he said to the, to the young teachers there, don't be afraid to be wrong. So as long as you're magnanimous enough to know when you're wrong and to bring the student back and go, my bad, that doesn't work. Let's try something else. Yeah. Have a go with it. You know, because if you're right and you're right on this where you can just go, oh, yeah, you know, just think fade or how would you move that ball left to right or higher or lower? If, you, if you're right on it, I, I tell you, they'll love you. They'll, they'll pay you whatever you want. Um, That's so cool. Yeah. I it's, love it's, that you captured it's... these before looking at them. Oh, too. yeah. Yeah, so but I, cool. I can't do it again. It's, it's done now. So I need other um, subjects. So anybody in the Toronto area who wants to come up and just hit balls. <laughs> um, but yeah, Everyone, like, everyone's going to be doing that. Yeah. Again, like it, it's, it's pretty basic. Like <clears throat> you have you have intent, you have force, you have motion. That's, I, I think, pretty undeniable in terms of who we would talk to. Um, so it all starts with intent. That creates the force that creates the motion. Okay. If you remember that kind of sequence, then you can kind of do some really, really cool stuff. Like there's only the tip of the iceberg and what other people are doing on the team. Like there's way more. So have fun with it. Go out and just do whatever you want to do with it. And, and you'll see more of what we've done later on as we, as we move through it. Um, where were we after that? So we have oh. drills, and but I want to see the shoe graphic oh, you that you have too. All yeah. right. Okay. So lesson this morning. Okay. So what I want you to look at is that trail foot. Okay. So I love foot joy, foot joy. I'm sorry. Um, if you're going to give it to me by this, cause they give me free shoes and stuff. So it's my bad. Um, but these particular foot joy shoes are not very supportive. Okay. Ah, so okay. She's rolling out on the trail foot because they're not supporting her. So this is at the end of the lesson. Again, another player that we kind of don't do a whole lot of technical stuff. She's a really, really athletic, um, really talented, naturally athletic. So we like let her natural talent flow through an awful lot, very external cues all through the session. Um, but this was at the end of the session where I just wanted to point this out to her. So I threw her on the mat. Um, sorry, I asked her to hit balls off the mat. You can say <laughs> that. <laughs> um, so what I, what I want you to watch, and this is where I talked a little bit about this later on, where I was like talking about the actual, you know, the color coding and stuff. So I'm just gonna draw a line because I videoed this one. So it could be a video so I could draw stuff on it. Um, so just watch where the pressure goes on that trail foot. So as she starts back, you can actually see it start color coding out in the way. So it's really, really pushing 93% out onto that outstep of that foot. And that toe section, okay, so you had a blue and green in that toe section, now starts going very, very red. Yeah. There. So you know, you know you have this rolling pressure kind of thing going on in that trail. Now, that's enough in itself for me to say to her, you need to get a new pair of shoes, right? But watch how long it takes for that COP to shift back because she's rolled onto her foot. So watch. So she started downswing. So let me just. Uh, oh my goodness. He started downswing. Not moved, not moved, not moved, not moved. It's actually still there, still there, still there. Now it jumps. Holy mackerel. And it only jumps, if you watch, the only reason this jumps is because she pushes her heel off the ground. It's not even rolling, breaking. She's pushing the heel off the ground to move it. Wow. So she cannot push back off because the side of her foot has rolled that much off the shoe. So if you're out, like 
like look at that stuff that's not the first time i've seen that either like in terms of shoe development and you know the more we move towards casual runners and stuff like that so just as an aside like if we're going to talk about footwork you know i did some stuff with a guy in niagara who does uh, like works on, on feet and stuff like that and he said like one in ten people have foot issues so if we're gonna you know look at foot moving and stuff just have a look at that stuff before you go and um, just to make sure that people are wearing the right footwear and you'll probably see it even when they come up in the drive range but you see an awful lot where that can change so if we went to her okay well i see you're rolling out in your trail foot on the outside you know i want you to uh, imagine you're pushing on the instep she can't do it in those shoes she can't do it and she can't push off in those shoes so instead of me getting into that with her again she likes external stuff go buy a new pair of shoes that's easy. That's easy. Yeah. I'm sure you'll get that's nice easy. Yeah. It's a lot easier for me too. And if you're a head pro and you own the shop, then you obviously benefit from it in kind too. So it's, it's a win. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's the stuff that I know it sounds sad and pathetic. We were talking about it on, but that's the stuff that gets me excited where I'm like, Oh, that's cool. I can show her. No, that. That's really cool. We've never seen that before. We've never, yeah. you know, we've, we've talked about footwear because I tell people not to mm-hmm. stand on the mat with metal spikes. And yeah. of course, um, Hash is working with the square shoes, of course. So there's, yeah. you know, everybody's seen the ad of yeah. Nick Faldo standing on the V1 pressure mat with the square shoes on. But we've never actually seen someone show a pressure trace with the red pressure yeah. so far to the edge of the foot. That's fascinating yeah. and absolutely something we should be talking about and looking at. Um, because, yeah. boy, what an easy fix if it's just a shoe change. Jeez, that's it's, it's, so simple. It's so easy. It's so easy if you can, if you can get that there. Like, it's, it's, it's really, really simple. Um, yeah that's easy that's, that's awesome the easiest thing you're going to get like but besides setup and doing like this little like the paddle drill um so this is one that i tried is this drills steve yeah this is drills is that okay okay i was about to say the all the good people will will wring my neck if i don't ask you about drills they love the drills okay so please show us drills. all right um i'm gonna show you a couple right now, this please is, thank I, you i haven't really i if anybody's watched my Instagram, you know, I like to put up all tips and I like to come at it from a different angle and try to find stuff that you can actually be more like efficient with and that you can like, kind of more uh, like in tune with. Um, I try to think of different ways to do it. I haven't had the time to do it yet on this. So that's why I'm excited for next month because I'm going to do a lot of stuff on this now. Um, so this is toe drills. Um, so this is basically player is setting up uh, raising his toes. Okay. Um, I think every coach watching this will have a player that already extends or pelvic trusts or moves the pressure laterally onto the toes in transition um, too much and, and not actually move towards uh, lead heel or lead toe, excuse me. Um, so this was just trying this with this player. Now, what I want you to watch, and this is no kind of thing on this drill, is the finish. So he doesn't really move in the finish. And that's my only critique, if anything, of this drill. And because I'm saying it's it's not, I'm not saying it's not a great drill. It just doesn't work for this player. And because I'm saying that, I'm going to come up with something that would work for him. And I will put it up and I'll send it. Um, Tag me in that because I was going to say, this is my favorite drill. As a beginner golfer, when I go to the range yeah. with my pressure mat, this is the very first thing I think of. I just curl my toes in my shoes and I immediately get more power and distance in my driver. And I don't finish like that. So maybe it's because yeah. I'm younger and more athletic than this person, but I'd be interested to see what your fix is for that finish. So I love that drill. So how about I put a hanger underneath your trail foot, which raises your trail foot in the setup. So as you go back, it pushes your pressure onto heel on trail heel. But as you go into transition, you can push back down on that hanger to actually push yourself and rotate through. Okay. So I that, like it. That was, that was my issue with this guy was, when he did it, that trail foot is too planted for my liking. And, I, and I'm not saying that this is the, like, it's a cool drill to stop him doing what he was doing. So it does, the, it does work. But again, if we can make it and tweak a little bit where he can actually rotate through to a full finish and actually like really release that trail foot instead of having it kind of breaking and rolling, it'd be really, really cool. So, yeah. and that's where I'm like, when, when I, when I first started doing this and went through the drills and I'm like, man, these are really cool. And I got to, I got to work in them. And you know, there's, there's other stuff you can throw in there. Like we had this guy, I don't have the video, but we, we also put a golf ball underneath his toe and we did that, but we didn't get any trace off it because it jumped around too much because his pressure was moving um, and he nearly fell over. So don't do that. Uh, don't do that, um, please. No, but like, 
you know, I have one where I'm going to do where I'm going to put in um, I'm just waiting for another player that actually has a pelvic thrust like that. And I, I, I'm going to put in a, a putter, um, you know, the, the stroke lines for the putters, you know, where you put them into the, into the green. Yep. So I'm going to put one of those diagonally along, along the mat either side and see if they can actually, and show them the COP and ask them to actually match the COP with that line and see if they can do that as an external cue. Or I'm actually like going to create a little, you know, like a bobble off a head cover. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get one of those. I'm going to get some Velcro and I'm going to stick it on their belt buckle and tell them there that's you. their COP. So their COP has to stay inside, inside. Um, but again, you know, it, it's it's where they are in, in, in setup too. You got to look at that in, in terms, because he likes this guy here, sorry, um, likes to get his pressure on his toes too. Um, and as an aside to that, guys, don't, I, I'm not preaching, sorry. Just from what I've seen, just because I get someone from their toes to their heels doesn't necessarily make them better because you can have players, if you push them too much on their heels, they will do the opposite in, in, in early. So they'll actually go dominant heel and go to toes early because they feel misbalanced. Mm. One of our, you know, it's cool here in Canada because I can make this argument. Well, one of our most, like one of the top priorities is to maintain balance as a human being. So if you're here in Canada and you're walking along a side street and you slip, on ice or anybody using on ice, how quickly do you bounce back up? Like not even 0.2 of a second, you're oh, balanced. So it's the same thing. So if you have a player that's either heel dominant, toe dominant, you know, when you push them one way or other, just be careful. Uh, um, look at what reaction you get. It's really, really important because your body's going to want to self-correct. It's like when you have a player that has too much knee flex at setup and they go early into, into, into backswing, you'll see them stand up because they're, they're self-correcting. Um, so just just have a look at that if, you, if you're working on heels and toes in my experience again i'm not saying i'm right just probably so i got so i gotta brag about the software because seeing it right with the video is what you're talking yeah. about look at yeah. the bot look at the overall swing 100%. in yeah, addition yeah. to the awesome little graph of data that you have there that's telling us what's going on with the ground because those two yeah. pieces kind of need to also i mean they have to match right yeah they have 100%. to um, so we only have a minute left and I'd love, you know, fine to go over a few, but is there one more really great drill that we want to talk yeah. about or what, what's yeah. what, you know, I know we, you have so much left, but what's. Okay. This is called left hand, right hand. Um, so we did this yesterday. Um, me and my assistant, we were messing around a little bit um, in between rain showers. Um, again, I'm never going to be able to do this again because I, I'll have the intention and I've seen the traces. Um, but this was just to see, because it's a drill I use on its own where I say, okay, well, if I have somebody who doesn't rotate trail side enough or doesn't rotate their trail side through impact enough, I get them to hit shots with the right hand on its own. So I was like, all right, well, if I do that all the time, then what, how does that affect pressure? So if I'm just gripping with my right hand, does that move my pressure more into my trail heel? Or, and this is the way I thought about it, I was like, if I'm just gripping with my left arm on its own as a right-handed golfer, that's surely going to push more pressure onto my toes because that's the only arm and our arms weigh what, like 20 pounds each or something. It's in around that anyway. Um, so left hand, obviously on the left. Uh, and that was, that was an accident by the way. But anyway, <laughs> so watch the left hand trace. So as we go back and I'll blow these up a little bit so you can see the number. Okay. Um, so left hand trace, as we look at the trail heel, which is that 62 number. Okay. And then we're going to go right hand. So right hand, top of backswing, roughly top of backswing is less. Wow. Pretty. So the, the movement back is the same, 66 on, on trail side. Um, but why is there more pressure on my trail heel when I'm swinging it with just my left arm when there should be, in my mind, before I did this, there should be more. So then I looked at the take when I was like, okay, well, if I'm just supporting with my left arm, I, all that would happen if I just swung my left arm is it would just move out like this. So I got to support it with something else. So watch my trail hip on the one on the left. Watch the way it goes real early to support oh, the yeah. So because, and then if you watch the one on the right, because I'm right arm dominant, I don't need that trail hip to help me. So it's just oh, my right yeah. arm early. So wow. it's the supportment or supporting role of the, the pelvis and the trail side of the pelvis and the hip to move the club because I don't have enough strength in my lead arm because I'm not left arm dominant that actually pushes the pressure early and gets it more matched up. So, but watch, sorry, and I, I know we're going out of time here, so I'm going to go real quick on this one. So watch the trail side that it impacts. So see how much pressure there is on the lead side when I'm just swinging it with my right arm. 
Okay. It's amazing. It's this this is one. so cool to see these next to each other. So watch the left hand one. Watch how little pressure gets to my lead side. Wow. <laughs> so this is where I go with it. I'm like, okay, well then you could, this is a big jump now. So bear with me on this one, but you could say, okay, well maybe lead arm should, if you have someone that doesn't rotate, maybe you could try lead arm swings on their own, maybe. But you'd want to have that trail arm acting on the way through and trail side working on the way through um, yeah. to, to really make it work. So that's, wow. that's, that's all of that. Um, uh, hang on. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to show you one real quick thing, really, really quickly. All right. So can you see that? Yep. All right. So this oh, I'm is so excited the, for this. This is all the data from all the swings that I've done so far. Okay, so basically you have, I've, I've blocked out the students' names, I hope that's okay. You have the date recorded, the um, dexterity of the player. Um, so the first column that we go into is the COP reverse point. So that's the point in the golf swing where their COP starts actually moving back towards target. Um, as we go in here in P1 LT percentage, that's lead trail P1 at setups. So all your percentages are all the way through to P8 on this. In those blue columns, you have the differentials, which is the real in my mind, the real information, because that's the differential between the piece, between their positioning. So how much have they segmentally moved in between those positions? Not what they are in the point, it's how much they move. It's really, really important in my mind. I could be totally wrong on this, but hey, there's no harm collecting all the data. And um, so the next one is your, your lead foot, your heel to toe ratio. Again, all through the P's and your differentials in the blue columns. Um, your last one is your heel to toe in your trail foot, again, um, all through the P's and into different columns. Um, and then as you go in this, we didn't really talk about this, but this is the lateral traces. Um, so again, we go, we have the differentials and laterals um, between all these, between all the P's. So you have your zero to P2. So how much you move laterally early on. This is segmented for elite players on top. So you can see quite a lot of the players are 34, 13, 32, 22, 16, 17. And then there's a little mix down bottom. Um, and then on the right hand side, you just have where their max laterals occur. Um, so you can see P5, P5.5, P7.5 there, and P7.5 down below, which is really weird, but I got to find out why that happens. Um, but that was a really weird swing. But again, good players 161, 155, 156, not so, 64, 92. Doesn't really mean anything to me yet. I'm just collecting it to, so hopefully someday I, I look at it and I go, oh, yeah. Be like Beautiful Mind. Did you ever see that movie? Yeah, I did. And I've got uh, some folks that are probably going to see this and be like, oh my God, I got to see that data. I've got some it, yeah, techie it, geek guys that I'm sure are watching and want, want, yeah, want like to dive in. This doesn't really take time. Again, you know, just be religious with it. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like I do this every night. You know, it takes about an hour and a half or whatever, but it's worth it in the end because if you come up with something that works or that helps your players that because that's it you, you want to gain knowledge to help your players if you can come up with something out of all of this stuff that you go oh hang on a second so an elite player is more in a 20 30 band I, hypothetically that's not just a hypothetical then you go okay well that's where i'd like to see everybody move in into that if i could if i can push them that way but if they if the player in front of me has like some restrictions or they can't move that's fine too but that would be kind of my goal or that's what i look to see but even players, like, as I said, there's a couple in there that I highlight that, like, are off the scale uh, mm -hmm. where, where I know. So, like, you have minus laterals in as their biggest lateral in two of those players. Um, and I know who they are. Um, but, yeah, looking at those, I'd be like, okay, well, why is that happening? And does that work? Yeah. Um, Interesting. And then down lower, you have um, some mini tour players. Um, and they're, they're all in green. So you'll see with all the, the, the cool thing on there, their COP um, reverse reverse position and um, so when their cop starts moving back towards target is 3.53 3.53 so all interesting all, yeah late backswing early early um no, sorry yeah late backswing while all the lesser players um amateurs so not so experienced players let's say are all higher so they're all p if you're looking there where i'm looking there and um, just yep there. it's all p That's five sevens um you know and again they're the better amateur players up top p 3.5 you have a p5 there but three so you start yeah, they're definitely closer to the yeah, these little tiny things. Um, and that's that's kind of what I do. Um, so. That's amazing. I can't wait to see that after there's more than 30 players there. Yeah, awesome. yeah it's, gonna, it's gonna be fun once I get about 100 players. And that's why I try to put everybody on it as much as I can. It doesn't matter if you've never hit a golf, ball, I'm still gonna put you on it. Um, yeah. And you know, you chances are you could do something really, really cool um, and work really, really or move really, really well. 
It's like when I'm teaching a beginner and they go, oh, I've never swung up. I was like, I don't care. Just show me what you can do. Show yeah, me. Yeah, right. Not, and then we build it because, or we improve it. Like we never change it. But, you know, if, if you're going to tell someone, okay, well, here's the first page of the book, dude, like golf's hard enough as it is. And, you know, we, we got a job as, as coaches to, to make it fun, exciting, interesting, quickly, real quick. Um, and if we could do that, then, then it's pretty cool. I love it. Well, we, I have learned so much. I am fascinated by all of these things you've shared with us tonight. And I would really, really, really like for you to come back. Yeah, Please absolutely. come back. Absolutely. Uh, so good. You guys um, go follow uh, Steve on his Instagram page. The girls put his Instagram handle up in the chat window earlier. Um, Haley, please do that again. Yes, yeah, Steve's it's uh, Instagram.com backslash mm -hmm. Steve 72 MO. And Steve, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I am just so grateful. And the folks that registered will send the link out. I'll send you the link for anyone that wants it um, in your network. And thanks yeah. you guys so much. I'll see you next week. I think yeah, next and week. anybody has any questions whatsoever, like honestly, just DM me on Instagram, whatever. I'm more than happy to, to help you out any way I can. So. Roy Wall sent a note through that he is going to send you a DM. He also said the information Perfect. is awesome. I see tons of comments. Um, folks have all stayed and they're all saying, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Don't so much. come so, back. <laughs> yes, they will. I, I, I think they'll be waiting for you to come back. Uh, thanks. Ahead. Thanks guys to all that tuned in. So I really appreciate it. And thank you, Mandy. I know you, uh, this uh, sometimes you don't get a lot of thanks for doing these shows. So I think they're awesome. I, it really, honestly, and no BS, it really helped me out when I was first trying to know things to, to tune in and to, to hear Jake and other guys come on. And you don't have to watch like, you don't have to know everything, just these little gold nuggets that you can pick up and can really, really help your development and then in turn help your players and help your players. You're going to be more successful. It's pretty straightforward. Awesome. Well, thank you. All I right. love my job and I love working with people like you. So awesome. All right, guys, have a good night. I'll see you next week. Happy Tuesday. Peace. And uh, we'll see you soon.